saying the original to the ghetto. You know, just compare it, but it was as rough as rough. Not that it's not interesting, it's just that it was so ahead of its time. Like the graphics are a little rough. Either way, we're watching Michael Chamolais and their version. Oh, she knows good, you know it's great. The critics give it all a solid eight. With the expectations of the sequel, so let's see. Let's get into it. So then they is introducing Arrakis to us in a voiceover. So from the get off we can tell, you know, that it's definitely some revolutionary vibes. The Arrakis people are you know, fighting as a trying to save their planet, trying to save their home. I don't know how much of it has to do with the resource, but I imagine it would. You got Batista, the colonizers. But that's what I'll say one thing. I think that the original does a better job in really explaining what was at stake and why the time for or the space travel and who full space how important that was and how it's done, like, you know, in reality. Did I say Michael Jamley, I mean Timothy. But they do introduce us to the voice early. At breakfast, Paul and his mom and his mother ask him to, you know, try out your voice, try out your voice, baby. Let me see how you doing. And um, he, so I'll make something a little happen, but then he isn't ready yet. I don't think he's particularly comfortable with using it all once to use it. Or he, I don't know that at this stage in the movie, he views himself as this many Jesuit and more of a prince, uh, you know. But it is a stunningly visual movie. All right, so they did a little brief Slap up on Spice, the Fremen, why it's important. I think the whole movie does a better job, but it's not bad. Um, the Emperor's hero is here on Galadan to announce the deal. Moon Knight also gives good performance. I thought it was a good... Um, Duke as well. What is the interesting um, political, I guess, tension in the movie is that House Atreides is obviously aware that the emperor wants them dead and this isn't specifically a gift. But they still did it, so maybe they what? Maybe they were not cognizant of how dangerous it was. Maybe they thought they could handle it. Of course, it would if it worked out. It would have been of their benefit, but maybe yeah. I think they weren't aware of exactly everything that was going on. Does Cal Drogo? Does Duncan die in this movie? I don't remember. I him and Paul are talking and they, uh, he's telling them about his premonitions and whatnot, seeing him dead with the Fremen and standing with the Fremen. This is one of the things, issues I had with Paul is that he's obviously a very smart young prince, young dude, but I didn't understand why he was not like grasping the danger that they were facing now it was that and we just like, oh, we going to Iraqis, we can 
be in charge of the squad right now and yada yada yada. It's almost like early in the movie he was not you know he was not displaying the attributes of a mature young heir. But then I don't know, he maybe he was not simply not aware, maybe no one told him. But anyway, that was the shocking part, because it seemed like he, you know, was a avid reader, like he really was, you know, a smart guy. So I'm like, why don't you, why are you not grasping how dangerous the scene is right now? This scene where um, him and Josh Brolin and Gurney are fighting, I think Gurney is played by um, John Luke Picard in the original. Um, is a good comparison between the new and the old movie in terms of like the tech, the storytelling, the approach of the actors. Um, I think the second movie is far superior. Of course, the tech is a little better, the graphics, the cinematography, um, the fighting is a little better as well. Of course, the well, Harkin is way more gross in the original movie. So this is the first instance where we see Dr. Yue who, you know, stick a pin in it, put your red flag, so the Eha cannot be trusted, just FYI. But I liked the scene with um, Paul and... Uh, Trucia, the Empress Trucia, and the Benny Jesuit. It was pretty good. Um, it was very good, very... Cinematography was on point. Um, acting on point, storytelling on point. It's a powerful scene. Um, and we were... It, it begins, you know, uh, it was a nice thrust in the plot explaining to us sort of, okay, all kind of forces are working in this sort of endowment of House Atreides with power over Arrakis. So the Harkin made their first assassination attempt on Paul. Again, they do a better job of explaining that in the first original movie. Um, But it was good. Good scene. I'm starting to see the tension build up in the movie. Um, and also, in the original movie, they do explain where um, the guy is from, the human computer, and their relation in relation to the, you know, Iraqis and all that. So. Well, I guess you could read the book, but, you know, in terms of the visual art, stunning, stunning, it's, getting, it's really getting, picking up, it's picking up. And we also begin to see that the Fremen are actually very um, savvy, tech savvy. They've very much adapted to the hostile planet. And they're not just, you know, some bush people, whatever, slaves. Classic colonization story. The mother and the son. It's the mother and the son. So we need a part two. We need a part two. This is Chef Taste. We need the sequel.